All right, for part three on our lesson in in-context design, we're going to continue making some modifications to the cover plate that we designed in the context of the assembly. Now it's important to recognize that even though you may build a part in the context of an assembly, not all of a part's features necessarily need to be built in the assembly mode. Uh, some features might be standalone. You could open up the part in its own window and add those features because you don't need to reference any existing geometry. So let's work through an example of that. Let's pick on our cover plate and choose the open part icon. This will open that part in its own window. Now what we'd like to do is build a boss on the top of this and maybe add some fillets just to give uh, some finish to this part. I'll pick on the top face of the model, insert a sketch, and I'll begin by using my offset entity sketch command and I'm going to use this a couple of times so I'm going to thumbtack that up. I'll enter an offset value of 0.125 and then we'll begin by offsetting the edges the circular edges of our holes. I'd also like to take a quarter inch offset of the entire face but I'll reverse the direction on that. And that's going to be the sketch that I'll use to create our boss. Now this is a multiple contour sketch so what I'll do here is use our boss extrude command but I'll specify selected contours. This way I can choose just the contours that I want to use. And I'll pick this interior contour here and we'll extrude that 0.175 inches. And there's our boss. Now let's add a fillet feature and I'll add a fillet to the entire boss extrude that means all the edges and faces of that boss and the outer edge of the housing. So with just a couple of selections I can do a lot of filleting here. And that looks good. I've got a nice finish to my part. Now let's take a quick look at the feature manager tree. You'll notice we have boss extrude 1, the cut extrude, those are the, for the holes, the boss extrude we just added, and then the fillets. But notice the first two features have an arrow next to them. And this is in, an important designation. This designation means that those features have a reference to some other document. And if you recall, we built both of those features in the context of the assembly. So this is what's called an external reference arrow. It indicates that this feature references a part or an assembly external to this model. Therefore, these features will update only when those, uh, when those external assemblies or parts update. Now let's return to our assembly. You'll notice that all the changes we made to our part, even though it was in the part mode by itself, those automatically propagate to the assembly and everything's looking good. As a last step, let's take a look at the part that's listed in the SolidWorks Feature Manager tree. This is just simply given a temporary name, Part 3, Carrot Housing Assem, which means this is a temporary part named Part 3 that's located in this assembly called Housing Assembly. But notice that there are square brackets around this part. What this means is that by default, when SolidWorks creates a new part, it is created as what we call a virtual part. That means this part is internal to this assembly. It does not exist as a separate file yet. There may be cases where you want a part just to be an internal part. You don't necessarily need to have a separate file for it. Or there may be cases where you do need a separate file and SolidWorks supports either case. If we do need to save this out as a separate file, that's just a simple matter of a right click and choose Save Part in External File. So let's go ahead and save this out as an external file as the last step in our exercise. Here we're shown the part, the path. We can change any of that. I'll enter a new name and save. And now you can see the name has updated. And we've just gone through a nice cycle of creating a part from scratch in the assembly and eventually saving that out as an external file. And so that's a, a great example of the workflow of in-context assembly design in SolidWorks.